At the bottom of the screen, there are two areas, one of which we've talked about a little bit already, the sheet names. We want to talk about some navigation issues there. We also want to talk about the function of the status bar that's immediately below it. Earlier we had said uh, we see sheet names at the bottom of the screen, sheet one. We can easily move to sheet two by clicking on it, or sheet three. And again, the reminder is as we move into Excel, perhaps with more data, and as, we, as the needs arise, we can add sheets, we can rename them, we can insert them. The navigation arrows to the left of these aren't, aren't very useful at the moment, but they, they do have a general purpose. And if we could imagine a situation where maybe we had uh, 10 sheets here, the two inner arrows here would simply move the display of the sheet names. And I can simulate this a little bit by sliding to the right here. And this is actually a split bar, which in some cases you might move to the right to allow you to see more sheet names. Now right now we have only, only three sheet names, so moving this leftward isn't something we typically do. But just to show you what the navigation keys do, if I were to drag the split bar, say, to here, and I'm thinking out loud saying, well, gee, I, I want to get to sheet three here, this arrow right here that points rightward as I click, notice how I now see more sheet names, and then I could click on sheet three. Or the arrow to the left here points me to the left. Notice it doesn't select the sheet, but it does show the sheet names to the left or to the right. The extreme right arrow here will show the last few sheet names, in this case only one of them. The extreme left arrow will show the first few sheet names. Now typically you will find this split about here on your screen, but you can move it around at any time. In a workbook that has many, many sheets and you'd like to see the sheets, you'd like to see them as many as possible, you may even take this uh, scroll bar and make it extremely narrow. And, and yet you can still use the scroll bar. A nice little shortcut here also is on a workbook, in a workbook that has many sheets, if you right click on navigation keys, you will see a list of the sheet names. Now right below this is what we call the status bar. And uh, there's one aspect of this that we'll want to see a little bit later in the context of uh, of, of values on our screen, but most of the time, I think as you look down here, just an occasional look to remind you that maybe the numlock key is on, I'm pointing to it right now. Uh, the numlock button on most keyboards is along the right hand side next to your number keypad. Some people use this, some people don't. It's just a nice on-screen reminder that that button is on. And sure enough, as typists, what do we sometimes do? We hit the caps lock key by mistake. As you use Excel at different times, you will uh, get messages at the bottom of the screen. And right now, for example, uh, on the left side of the status bar, you'll see the word ready. But if you were to click in a cell and start data entry, uh, immediately that word changes to enter. Uh, part of the reason I bring this up is that sometimes you uh, attempt to use the menu at the top of your screen, and uh, you might be surprised by the fact that uh, the command that you're trying to use isn't choosable often what that means is you forgot that you were trying to do or starting to do data entry. Uh, in the midst of data entry, very few commands are choosable. So in this example here, uh, probably what we would do is just uh, click back in the cell and uh, resume the data entry. And as soon as you were to complete that, then the word uh, enter changes back to ready. On my screen below this, I do have the Microsoft Windows taskbar. Uh, if you're familiar with Windows, you know that there is a method whereby you can hide this, and that's a personal choice, and it's uh, really outside the confines of this course, but your screen might not be showing uh, the Windows taskbar at the bottom of the screen. You can't really use Excel proficiently without using the mouse. Most of the things that we've done already require the use of the mouse. Many of them can be done with the keyboard also. But one thing you want to be sensitive to is the appearance of the mouse pointer on the screen. We'd like to talk about the four different ways that the mouse could appear and alert you to that fact as we move into some of the other features in Excel. If, for example, you want to click on a different cell because you're going to enter some data there, you point to the cell and click. Uh, if you want to select a number of cells, you will click and drag, making sure the mouse pointer 
has this three-dimensional look. You will see, however, that the, that the mouse will look different at different times. For example, here, as I slide the mouse downward, notice how as I point to the edge of this group of highlighted cells, the mouse looks like an arrow. Uh, that happens when only one cell is selected, too. Now, if we were trying to highlight a group of cells, we don't want the mouse pointer to look like an arrow. A little bit later, we'll talk about how we can actually move data. If we put the mouse at the lower right-hand corner of the active cell, its shape looks like a thin plus sign, or what some people might call crosshairs. And so in the general worksheet area, a mouse looks like a three-dimensional plus. It might look like an arrow, a slightly leftward pointing arrow. It might look like a pure thin plus sign. As you slide the mouse into what we call the formula bar, the mouse pointer assumes the look of an I-beam. And that's ideal when we're doing uh, data entry and making changes to formulas. Also, by the way, notice that if you point to toolbar buttons, the mouse has that left arrow look also. So do be sensitive to the look of this. Now, some of this will play out, will flesh out, so to speak, as we use Excel, but do be sensitive to this look. The mouse pointer looks different. In Excel, you use the left mouse button typically for most actions, but the right mouse button also has a role to play. Let's look at some of these possibilities as we take a look at the Excel screen. Earlier we mentioned clicking on commands or clicking on toolbar buttons here. Clicking in Excel documentation and in standard Excel usage means click with the left mouse button. The right mouse button has a role to play, however. Its general meaning is show me a shortcut menu. For example, if you highlight some cells, maybe you want to erase them, maybe you want to copy them. If you highlight some cells and right click, you get what's called a shortcut menu. The menu choices you see here ideally would be ones that you might want to use at this point. Now every command that we see here is available off the standard menu at the top of the screen, but we're only seeing an abbreviated list of them. Now maybe I do want to do a copy, maybe I want to do a cut, fine, the commands are here easily accessible. There surely will be times when what you want to do uh, does not appear on the shortcut menu and you will have to go back to the top of the screen. But this is handy because sometimes it, it alerts you to things that maybe you hadn't even thought about. Maybe you didn't know that you could insert a comment. And uh, if you're the inquisitive type, maybe that uh, uh, gets you interested in something you hadn't even thought about. I sometimes find myself right-clicking on something, perhaps by accident, or just kind of curious as to what could I do here. And so if you just right-click, for example, example, on a row number on the left-hand side of your screen, you see almost the same set of commands, but uh, here would be a quick way, for example, to insert a row or to delete a row. And again, as you right-click on different portions of the screen, you do get different kinds of menus. Another aspect of this, if you were to right-click Click on any toolbar button or anywhere in the toolbar or menu area. Anywhere up here, if you right click, you get a list of the standard default toolbars, the ones that are currently present are indicated by check marks, and you see other toolbars. Now these will come up in the course of the class. Now, these will come up uh, throughout the course. We'll talk about a number of these, but if you wanted to activate of these, perhaps you were dealing with the, uh, pictures. You could activate the picture toolbar just by clicking on it. And again, we don't really need that right now, so we can hit the X to get rid of it. But uh, sometimes you'll find yourself saying, I want more screen space. And so you might point anywhere in the toolbar, hit the right mouse button and say, well, for the moment, I'll just hide the standard toolbar or at least get rid of it. I click on formatting, it disappears. I will no doubt want that back at some point, so I'll point up here anywhere in the toolbars, right click, 
and choose formatting to bring it back. We mentioned earlier, if you, in the bottom of your screen, In this section, we gave you the basic overview of the Excel screen as you see it when you first begin. We talked about the menu bar, the toolbars, the formula bar, the basic worksheet layout, and the concept of worksheets and workbooks. We also talked about the mouse pointer, how you're sensitive to its appearance, and how you can use the right button for shortcut menus.